Hello, everybody, and welcome you to our fourth backstage session from the current institute. My name is Julia Binek. Unfortunately, Matthias Röder won't be here today because he's sick and we wish him all the best. And today our topic is music education online. And therefore, we will welcome our special guest, Jacqueline Miura, <laughs> the soprano. And Thomas Hello. Richter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a soprano, but I used to be a soprano when I was younger. <laughs> Hello, Julia. Hi, how are you? I'm quite fine. I'm just waiting for the hotel to turn down the music for you. <laughs> so not to disturb you in the live stream. How are you? I'm good. So you're in Berlin, I guess. <laughs> um, no, I'm in Hamburg, actually. But it's the small Berlin. I like it, too. I like it as well. <laughs> Great. So what so, do we have in store today? Today we have the topic music online education. How's it to have online lessons and all the topic around it? <laughs> I think it will be interesting. Perfect. Have you had some experience with the topic before in your life? Yes, I have um, a lot of online lessons, singing online lessons. And for me, it works really well. <laughs> Let's talk about it later. <laughs> and you um, have some trend report for us, I guess. Yeah, I try to dig into all what's new in music and tech. Some things are from 2020, some are very new, and I would like to have your opinion on those topics. Quite <laughs> fascinating. People can be brilliant when you let them be brilliant. Let's start. <laughs> so, Nikolai, please show the first part of the Korean Music Tech trend report. San Francisco Symphony has had a redesign. This time it's rather unusual. Unusual but fun. The new font is being influenced by music. Even there's a way to voice activate the new font. So quite unusual, but I liked it a lot. Uh, the first part was cut off, unfortunately, but it said that the San Francisco Symphony now had a rebranding, a redesign. And instead of having a traditional boring font type, they now have a font type that's more adaptable, more liquid, more vivid. And I think it symbolizes what music can do to you. It's not strict or every time the same, it can change. What do you think about this type of font? So I don't understand um, exactly what for what I can use it. May you explain it again? For example, if, if you had your own symphony in San Francisco, <laughs> and you needed <laughs> a, a rebranding and you want the rebranding to show what music can do. Um, Nikolai, could you please show it again? The San Francisco Symphony has had a redesign. This time it's rather unusual, unusual but fun. The new font is being influenced by music. Even there's a way to voice activate the new font. Look at the monitor, please. So, um, it's a way how branding works because um, it's not yeah, a boring font anymore, but it's a more unusual way to, to display what music can do to you. Great, yeah. <laughs> what's the next one? <laughs> yeah, Nikolai, what's the next one? The Bertolt Meyer works at the research center Hybrid Societies at Chemnitz University of Technology, Germany. He's also a DJ and electronic music enthusiast. He hacked his Ampress thesis in such a way that it plugs directly into the synthesizer so that he can control the music with his thoughts. Headphone jacks next to them, where you can remote control almost every button on the thing by sending an analog voltage into it. So instead of turning this knob, what I could potentially do is send a voltage into this connector, which is next to the knob, which remote controls the knob. Uh, we created a, um, a converter uh, for my prosthesis. So we call it the Synlimp. And the way this works is that you can, and this looks a bit weird, so uh, viewer discretion advised because I'm about to take my hand off. You can actually take this off. The Synlimp converts the electrode signals that Berthold's prosthesis picks up from his residual limb into control voltages. Let's take a cable from the synthesizer and plug it into my prosthesis like this. 
depending on where I plug this, this can be the pitch of a melody that's playing, this can be the filter frequency of a filter that's fil filtering a melody, it can be the fill of a rhythm, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, and I think Bertolt is, is a very good role model because he doesn't give up in his life. Of course, he, he also has become professor before, so um, he has never got, um, given up. Uh, given up. But the way how he hacks his body to produce music is quite stunning. I like it a lot. Yes, it's a great solution for him. <laughs> and amazing. if you want to see the whole video, you might go to um, our YouTube channel because Julia Kaiser, our journalist, did a great interview with him in full length. It's 28 minutes long and you can dive into his whole story. Nikolai, please uh, show clip number three. Browser app. Having fun generating spooky sounds. All you need to have is a browser, a computer and a mouse. You can even use your body gestures to control the theremin. Yeah, it's rather a short trend, but it's. Uh, I want to show you um, <laughs> an instrument I like in real life, where you can play music with coming closer and with raising your hand, increasing, uh, um, making it louder or making the sound higher. But now you've got a, the possibility to do it directly in a browser. And you can also use this theremin when you click on the camera button and you can use it actually as a real theremin. So raise your hand, come closer to the computer. It's a quite funny way to produce music. It would be funny I, also with, with ballet or with dance performances to use it. <laughs> yeah. Including a performance, yeah. Maybe, maybe also done um, remote. So one person is in Sydney doing this music, uh, the ballet is in Salzburg. And I don't know, maybe there might be a singer somewhere else. Um, have you ever seen such a theremin in real life? So for me, not. Maybe some guests out there who are watching us. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, by the way, you can write in the comments maybe whether you've played the uh, theremin in real life. But um, yes. I've never seen it in real life. But it was used to produce um, spooky sounds for horror movies back in the days. <laughs> so um, Nikolai, could you please play it again? So we can hear those sweeping sounds. The Theremin Browser App. Having fun generating spooky sounds. All you need to have is a browser, a computer and a mouse. You can even use your body gestures to control the theremin. But it can also uh, <laughs> be very nerve-wracking when you do it, for example, when you give it to your children. Um, the next one is something... <laughs> awesome, so I can eventually get my hands on the theremin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Mama, <laughs> Thank can you, I play Lucas. with it the whole day? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what we have the next? The next one is a beautiful choir. It's by Camden Voices. Physical distancing made it necessary. Tech made it possible. Virtual choirs. Enjoy this little excerpt from Camden Voices version of True Colors. I like it a lot. Um, in October or November, we had a um, alumni session here at the Kain Institute where we were talking about virtual choirs. And it's not that easy to put up because you have to bring them all in time. You, you, you have to yes. synchronize audios. But the result can be very stunning. Yes, to see how it works with all together. <laughs> um. Is it a thing you would like to join? I would try. Singer, right? I would love to try it out. Yes, also to try it out with an orchestra oh. and a singer. That would be also something new. Do you think it would be the next are level? <laughs> next, next level of Julia Bielek. <laughs> no, with um, playing the orchestra and the singer. Yes. Do you think the choirs and the orchestras are ready for it, or are they rather conservative? I think it depends. Yeah. But what have you seen with, with your? Um, with your institutes? Are they rather skeptical or future-oriented? 
it depends. I mean, now everybody has to be um, future orientated about the the time now, but it depends how you have the perspective on it. Do you have something yeah. else for us? Yeah, there, we've got the next one where we can see tools you can use to actually put up such a choir and other things. So please, Nikolai, play Oxford the next video. has put together this fantastic comprehensible list of resources you need for remote collaboration in music production. You learn how to decrease latency when recording via the web, you will find software for streaming your music and a how-to guide for conductors who now need to conduct via the web. The link can be found in the stream notes of the show. Yeah, as the other Thomas said before, <laughs> uh, uh, the stream notes will show you all the things we tell you today. So this is a good list of tools for collaboration and recording. And I think it doesn't need explanation, but it just makes it everything, it makes everything easier in life. Yes. Nikolai, uh, yeah. .com. Did you know? DiscoverKarajan.com allows you to explore the work and life of Herbert von Karajan. For example, type in Mozart and find all relevant recordings and performances. Also, find relevant places and venues where Herbert von Karajan played or lived. Yeah, you see, I, I sneaked in a trend from, from the Institute itself. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a really nice um, research platform because you can type all the names he worked um, with in it and then you will see all the the spots and what what they have played mm. and everything. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, I use like it a lot <laughs> <laughs> for, for researching your articles and your videos. Yeah. Yeah, which are, by the way, very beautiful and you can see them also on our YouTube channels. <laughs> and Nikolai, the next one is Synesthesia. our last one. Synesthesia is the condition when our senses melt together. We can suddenly taste words or see sounds. Belgium based researcher Xander Steinbrücke has developed a neural network that turns music into stunning visualizations. It is an impressive example that, when combined wisely, artificial intelligence and human arts can be a good team. That's very interesting, I mean, interesting, of course, but it's very beautiful to watch. I guess they made also a video or a movie with um, Vincent van Gogh's paintings. Mm -hmm. It might be the same person, um, Mr. Steinbrücke from Belgium. And maybe. what I would love to see is seeing it in real life. But maybe it takes a bit <laughs> yes. to Yes, how they do off. it. Yeah. Yes. Julia. Um, I'm already finished with the little trend report. Um, I hope it is yes, fine. Yes, let's dive into you. the topic. <laughs> yeah. What is it again? <laughs> now, how I said, music education online. And now we have the guest, Pauline Gude. I had the pleasure to talk with her yesterday. And um, she, uh, she studies cello at the Mozarteum here in Salzburg. And she had some experiences with online lessons. So let's hear it. Nice to have you here. <laughs> nice. nice to be here. Yes, how are you? <laughs> I am great. Thanks. You're in the Mozarteum right now. Right. I am in the Mozarteum in the beautiful room. 
for a pet to sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> really brave. So you had some online lessons, did you? Yes, we had. We had, especially in the first lockdown, a lot of online lessons, obviously, because there was no other way to, yeah. to stay in contact with the teacher. Um, yeah. So how was and it? How was your approach to it, to the lessons? Yes. I mean, it was great for the time. It was a really good possibility to stay in contact, to stay uh, fit on the cello and to <laughs> continue learning. And um, yeah, yeah. Starting But did you focus on other things during the lessons, like focusing more on the, um, I don't know, on the technique or <laughs> yes, that's the point. what you're normally that's focusing on? Yeah, it's the point. It's of course it's great, but it has lots of difficulties. So, um, for example, the sound quality is just completely different. So we were yeah. really focusing a lot on on the technical stuff, which is probably more easy on an instrument because you can see already a lot um, mm. in the positions of the left hand or on the right hand. Maybe more difficult than for singers, I could imagine. Okay. Um, yeah but that you were playing also together with the teacher we were actually <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, yeah of course there are lots of difficulties with the internet connection and um, yeah <laughs> if everything is working it's great but yeah not so easy in general um yeah but we um, started sometimes that i recorded a video for him that okay. he could listen, listen for himself and then he was then you were giving discussing comments. about it oh, ah yeah, yeah that's also a nice way then he has really yeah. the full video but it was it better when you put the camera a little bit off yourself not like too far yeah for sure and then um, of course we tried to I tried to get the, the recordings with the better audio quality, not only from the phone. <laughs> so yes. that was already better. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good to know. But you think it's an um, it would be a solution for the future when your teacher is not in the same um, era than you in the same city? Then that would be a solution for you when you say. Um, let's say it would be a solution for a short period, but. Of course, online lessons, they can't be compared to real life lessons. So I think it's good if there's no other option um, to take the best from it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, it's not not the same. So I would say musical education doesn't work only with online lessons maybe for for some for for the beginning or for some period but yeah not always but what would be the other what are the positive um, points of an online lesson uh, the flexibility you can have the lesson <laughs> wherever you are and um sometimes it's also good um then with the video you see some different parts or yeah so it's another <laughs> point of view <laughs> um yeah but of course it yeah it doesn't work so well like in real life yeah but it's a nice way that you will that you recorded the the piece before and then you had the discussion during the yes. lesson <laughs> that was very very helpful yeah for sure and um, yeah yeah because um so my online lesson is normally really an interaction with the teacher that we, that I'm singing that she's singing so recording would be also a way yes <laughs> yeah yes and it's also good to get in the in the work of recording because often I realize already lots of things when I'm recording myself so we can start on another And I think that's really important for, for a cellist to um, to record yourself and to watch yourself. <laughs> yes, it is. you can see lots of techniques and uh, it's a great option. 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the online lessons are really good for us to get the flexibility and to not to stay in the comfort zone <laughs> to, yes, to yes. have some solutions for the situation now yeah and it it opens another door for example here in with our channel class we had a master class exchange with the cello class from stockholm mm -hmm. and it was completely online and that was great because we got to know a new professor and new ideas new musical thoughts and as well the whole class and we had a nice chat with all of them together and yeah oh, okay. learned a lot so that was an online masterclass it's also nice yeah <laughs> yes yes yeah and one great thing in this online education was actually that for example my professor professor was sending us videos of himself okay. also with techniques and with music, thoughts on music and um that was actually a good adding to the lessons because we had had a kind of library for mm. learning cello and i think that wouldn't have happened if we would have continued only with real life lessons so yes it was also good but what would you improve especially mm -hmm. at the online education by from yourself or from your side um i mean of course the technical setup could be also improved every any time <laughs> yeah sure sure that's one point um i would say the preparation is maybe even better than for real life lessons because you need okay. to be more aware um i think that's something would change for me yeah that's well, interesting not change, but it was like yeah especially in the process of recording before that was good yeah yeah because then you have the intention inside <laughs> that you want to do it yeah well. <laughs> yes. yes yeah and you played also together with the other participants um not at the same time it, yeah we we were rehearsing here and having the lesson in Salzburg and then <laughs> yeah they could watch us we could watch them but yes. not to and how about online competition what do you think about that that all that's also i guess kind of or a part of the uh, music online lessons education <laughs> yes yes i would say it's quite the same like with the online lesson that it's a great possibility and um you can learn a lot but i would say it's a completely different way of competition because you have lots of time to do the recording sometimes sometimes not sometimes you have only like the few minutes yeah. and you play that but yeah you don't have this concert feeling while you're playing the competition i would say that it's different but of course it's great that there are these possibilities now <laughs> to to do the competitions yeah and not to wait it's, until everything is open again exactly, exactly. <laughs> that we take the opportunity yeah yeah great thank you for yeah. your thoughts and for your ideas <laughs> and for your experiences yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes bye-bye bye-bye yes <laughs> that was her her thoughts about it it was very interesting about the recorded pre-recorded videos and um that that's also very good for her part of cellos mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and now we have the guest jacqueline miura hi <laughs> hi hello hi. <laughs> nice to have sweden. you here <laughs> yes yeah i'm in sweden in green sweden it's light as you can see and beautiful yeah i mean the country house one of the good things about giving lessons from home. <laughs> lots of oxygen, I think. <laughs> lots of oxygen, yeah. Lots of birds to listen to, to get inspiration, you know. Mm. <laughs> the snow. <laughs> the snow, the snow. Yeah, well, it's gone now, all gone. <laughs> yes. So we had some online lessons, do, did we? Do we? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we, we are continuing with the... With, 
I mean, I think uh, I, I've listened to you a, a little bit before, and I think that one of the important things maybe is to have heard the person in person, so to speak, mm -hmm. to have had uh, or at some point point doing that. It's it's good to have the the real life uh, reference when mm -hmm. you you're doing the the things in not so real life in this sur surreal life <laughs> <laughs> so but i mean but i also actually have experience from from i had a, um, a student in ukraine and uh, we we didn't meet in person for about i don't know several months and then it was also I mean, after a while, you get used to this forum, to this way of listening, to the way of of uh, um, communicating, and to try to convey. And I mean, it's always difficult. You talked about it before, I'm sure, about the technique, because of course we rely on that, and it's the technique on both sides. So if I, for example, for example, show an exercise, it could be, I'm not quite sure that my student will hear what I mean because I don't know what their equipment is like and you know and sometimes there are very small subtle differences and but you can only try and then yeah, see how it goes basically and we have May also I ask you a question yes <laughs> no 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 questions no. Okay. I, I'm now here <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. uh, what, what kind of setup are you using for that? Are you using Zoom conferences or a special microphone? No, I mean, that is, I mean, uh, yeah, technique is not my strong side. And as you realized, well, you didn't realize, but actually I was cut off and then I was panicking and thinking, oh God, I have to get back on it. And, and this happens, of course, you know, but, and since I'm such a uh, sort of, well, uh, technical idiot or uh, let's say, uh, un Unaccomplished. Let's say beginner, maybe. Yeah, beginner. Let's say beginner. That sounds nice. Yeah, I'm a naive technician. Uh, <laughs> that means that um, I actually most of the times use FaceTime, and uh, just we haven't gone. I haven't gone beyond that so far. I know I am. I'm, I'm sitting in a couple of boards, and and we are now having our, our board meetings on on you know. Teams and Zoom and, and and lots of things like that. But um, when it comes to to the lessons so far, I've I've used used FaceTime and it's it's worked it works usually very well and it's quite easy easy. So. Yes. No entrance barriers and things like that. No, exactly. For me, the everything that says you know put in some data here, you know, I go, oh no, what should I do? So. But yeah. it's already much better than the phones when I was born. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's let me tell quite, you, quite a high quality. Yeah, a bit better than yeah. the phones when I was born as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. I mean, <laughs> same, same century. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think it gives us more flexibility. I mean, for example, you're in Sweden now. I'm here in Salzburg and we can have mm. um, lessons together, not to wait uh, when you're here or around. Yeah. Yeah. That's... And I, I think that is, I mean, it. if if I'm sort of have difficulties with technique from my own point of view, but I mean, the possibilities are endless and we just, scratching the surface and also I mean it's our imagination that is the 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 sort of makes the boundaries of that there are so many things that we could do and and as we've seen today in in, in your examples in the beginning you know with um, mu text that follows music or or uh, music that follows your hand movements or I mean there <laughs> are, I mean there, it seems like you know our fantasy is is just the limit, and 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 since that is limitless usually, then we don't know where we're going to get. But the possibility of me, for example, as I said, uh, giving lessons to a student in Ukraine and giving lessons to somebody in Austria, and and even if I'm out actually here when I'm out in Sweden in the archipelago, <laughs> if I'm in one of the islands and sort of sunbathing, I could just put on something that looks a little bit more you know suitable for giving a lesson I could <laughs> give a lesson even out there you know so um no I think that it, it's the 
it's also the challenge because when everything is available, it means also that you have to make some decisions. And um, that can sometimes be, I guess, tricky to decide uh, for students to decide who to, to go to because everybody can all of a sudden be available wherever they are. And um, also as a teacher to decide how you should try to convey what you're doing, you know, what is important. So, yeah. Yeah, yes. too much choice sometimes there. Yeah. I see yeah. with conferences. I'm a, a, a frequent conference goer when conferences were still in real life, like, I don't know, 20 times a year. But now since there are 50 conferences a day, I don't go to any conferences anymore, or at least not so, so much like I did in real life. No, it's okay. it's true. I, I I agree with that. That it's it can become a, a hinder as well. I mean, I used to go to the cinema, you know, quite often. But now I can watch however many movies I want <laughs> every night, day, evening, morning, you know, constantly. So it it is also it puts a lot of um, of uh, responsibility on you as a person. And I wonder what is going to happen with that. I, when I was little, you know, there were basically two or three types of milk. And now there is milk that is not milk. There is milk with milk. And there is <laughs> milk with even more milk from three ranging thousand from, you know, it's just. And you have, then you go and think, oh, God, I just want some milk. <laughs> No, you have to make a choice. Should you say the world? Should you say the world? You know, who should you say? You know. so. yeah, that's where, where did you two actually meet? Already in Salzburg in real life, so to say? Or have you found online somewhere? We met no. real life, yes. Yeah, we met, met real life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and she still decided to, to, to meet you. Yeah, yeah, when she had the opportunity not to. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So much choice, but she chooses you. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Of course, she's the best teacher we have on the world. Of course, <laughs> of course. yeah. Yes. Are, are, you, are you scheduling uh, lessons with completely new people? For example, the person from, from the Ukraine. Um, have you also met her or, sh or him in real life? or? No, I didn't meet him in real life until uh, quite a lot later. Uh, oh, and that okay. was through, I, I went to Ukraine to make some master classes, uh, to give some master classes. And he hadn't been in these master classes. And he was actually an instrumentalist that wanted to uh, sing and always wanted to sing and had sang when he was little. So he then decided that he wanted to take some lessons. And uh, we started like that and then i went to ukraine to do some more master classes and then i met him in real life so um and that was very interesting because i i, I was sort of not dreading but i was you know anticipating that maybe this won't be the same type of voice that i've heard over the internet mm -hmm. or, or you know but it was it was very similar i guess some things can be difficult to to uh hear and that is you could volume you know the how a, a voice actually travels i shouldn't say volume because it's more how it travels how you know the clarity of the sound that is what we experience as i think anyway as we the thing that we experience as being close to us and that we can hear well so uh this is something that can be quite difficult to differentiate when you listen to somebody on FaceTime, you know. Mm -hmm. I would just remember some funny situation when I was singing or when you were showing me some um, something, then the, the picture was frozen because of the internet connection. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I remember... It's always time, funny. Yeah, I had a problem and all of a sudden there were three of me as if one wasn't enough. Yeah, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Julia had sort of three of me, and one had stopped like that, and the other was like, oh. Like, oh. <laughs> so I had person was just skipping class. <laughs> <Five pictures. laughs> it could be like a nightmare as well, if you're not there. No, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but did you also have an approach as a singer to online something, online streaming, online lessons, online auditions, anything in online? Yeah, I mean, 
we're we're in a very difficult situation now. the The pandemic has has erased, uh, I would say, in many cases, culture in the world mm -hmm. and you know, culture as we sort of know it, because that has been one of the things that one has decided in most countries could be left out. You know that we can we can live without that. Whereas you have to have groceries and you have to have your medicine and you have to have some other things. Um, and I ha I've just been recording uh, um, some musicians for for a, co a concert I do on eighth of March, a uh, charity concert for for females and and female composers are exposed and female uh, uh, singers and and musicians, and the. Th feeling that I had when I all of a sudden for such a long time have been starved from the live sound is indescribable. We, mm. we think that we can that we can uh, make that that it's okay with 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 streaming and all that and it's fantastic it's it's a, it's a complement to what we do but there there is nothing that can actually live up to the to the experience of hearing music live and i think that's mostly so from from the music that we make because it is not enhanced with any electronic devices so it's different I'm not saying, you know, it's different with other type of music, but especially classical music or lots of folk music that is actually without electronic enhancement. And and that that feeling of of voice or instrument direct to somebody is, is uh, invaluable. That And I think that we have, and I hope that we will uh, soon come back to that and soon we'll... we'll um, have opportunities and that people will realize that the people who decide that this is important, this is also the food, you know, we have food yes. to eat, but we need food for our brains, you know. So That the vocal cords are not only muscles. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> feelings and, yeah, so, so of course, it's very good and, uh, and it's exciting that there are lots of things that we can do. I mean, that, but yeah. there's we can't there's no substitute i think for for what what do we say now irl in real life <laughs> i'm getting so sort of modern <laughs> modern and online yeah this is great and we should have no one that is cutting this this joy out of our lives um, at least not for the long term i, I was presenting something in september having yeah. moderation on stage I don't know why it was possible, but it was possible last year. <laughs> but then uh, uh, when we were uh, rehearsing it, I was singing on stage and someone came to me, no, stop singing, it's not allowed. Because, um, yeah, I like singing. I'm not that good at singing as you two are, but um, and you can get at it. least I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in the moment, it's not really uh, <laughs> allowed to to do anything that is uh, causing um, droplets co uh, coming out of your mouth. So, no. Which is understandable, but um, I hope yes. you Spanish quite. Exactly. It's understandable, but sometimes you think that, okay, if you look at, uh, for example, opera houses, of course, I'm, I'm biased towards opera houses, but if you think about opera houses, they, they have a lot of people that are used to getting people in and out of an auditorium and that you could, I mean, it could be safe. And I was, I was lucky enough, actually, to go both to Zurich and uh, Munich uh, in the midst almost of the pandemic, when it was <laughs> open, it was open for about two months. And in those two months, since my husband is a singer as well, he 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 was singing in both Munich and, and, and Zurich. And in Zurich, we were sitting beside each other. There was no space and everybody, everybody was, they had a uh, limit of the audience, but there was no space. But on stage, the orchestra was somewhere far away. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, the orchestra was far away and the chorus was far away. Yeah. But so, only the singers on stage, right? Yeah, only the singers on stage. But it was it worked perfectly, but of course it's and they had done it so beautifully, the speakers, so you could hear, you know, different where they were in different places, you know, the, the orchestra. So it wasn't just a sound coming towards it. It was wonderful. And then in Munich it was 
we were sitting separated. So there, I think there are ways if we would just allow it. I just, I, yeah, I am, I am a little bit shocked about, I must say, how the attitude has been towards, uh, yeah, Art. live music. Uh, yes. And, yeah. you know, footballers, they play football on a football field and we don't talk about them breathing. I know that they have, they have the restrictions, but, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that it's, it's interesting that there's, can be, how many are there in football? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, 22 people can run 22, after, yeah. yeah, I think it's 22, can run after a ball together and then we don't talk about any droplets. It's, yeah. For me, it is a mystery. Why, why is it like this? Yes. So, also, yes. I can... I oh mean, I am not speaking Turkey. I can dogo hearing music live that it's so needed. Greetings from Ankara. Yes, that's exactly what yeah. you said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it is. I have not studied it in in a sort of physiological or biological way, but there must be something that happens to us when we actually get music. That when live music hits our our whole mm. being, maybe it's the droplet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe course. it makes our immune system better because we get. <laughs> Who knows? Um, it just, to me, depends on the type of music. Um, but when it's uh, pop music, it, it's also the bass that's really touching the, the heart. Yeah. I, I forgot what it is, but it's, it's kind of like really a, a massage of your heart. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it's healthy, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's exciting usually. I mean, if you go to dance, I do like to dance, but you know. Uh, let's not go into that. But anyway, I, <laughs> I love to dance. But, and there's nothing, as you say, as, as satisfying as when you sort of feel the sort of boom, boom, sort of really, you don't almost have to move. You're moved by the music, you know. And, and that is something different, of course. But it, it, yeah, I, I think and I hope that we will realize that music also, live music also is medicine, actually, and that... They're going to. They're using now, as you probably have heard. I don't know if you talked about it uh, in, in uh, Austria and Germany and so on. But uh, they're starting to use singers to rehabilitate. Uh, rehab yes. Re Tating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those who've had Corona, because we know how to breathe and we know how yeah. to, you know, do all these things, and and that has been helpful for them. So maybe we will come back with the. Uh, with our skills in, in a different way. We will be as doctors and then we will be meeting. <laughs> then we're relevant way. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, but coming back to the online lessons, I think that's very, very useful and very good to have that now. Yeah, it's, I mean, infinity. otherwise we're, there's nothing and we can't travel uh, yes. off and off, you know, and you if you go somewhere, you might be stuck there. So you, you have to, to do something and at least it's it's a compliment. I mean, all the things, it's, it's as I often say, it's more colors on your on your palette. You know, when you're painting, you have sort of the prime colors and then you add and you add and you add and, and that it all makes the whole of you and the whole the yes. all possibilities. And um, comparing it to a um, life lesson, then now you're only seeing me like this, this picture, and then I can do with my body what I am yeah. <laughs> like to do, and then seeing me in life lesson, <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> she sees it. <laughs> but it, it can be tricky uh, when you're singing. Yes. Obviously, you are singing, but sometimes when I'm, I don't know, in in Zoom calls or something else, I, I do bank transfers in the meantime. I'm surfing the web because no one can see that what I'm doing. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. If not all the time, and not with the Karen Institute. There, I'm always <laughs> focusing on what is. is yeah. <laughs> but you, you were talking also about the uh, differences in 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 uh, in have, giving lessons on on uh, online. And one thing is that, of course, the the focus is very limited. So in a yes. way, you get better contact because when you're in a big room and you can sort of look to the right and left and everything you but you have you can be distracted as well but in when you have a, a lesson online you sort online of this, yeah. the, the, the screen you just have this space to sort of project or you know to to focus on so it could also maybe sometimes make you more focused when you're in the situation you know of more, more yeah. technical yeah, more technical. 
Yeah. Are you also having uh, exams, examinations um, through the web, or do you have to have some kind of neutral audio quality to to say, okay, Julia is a good singer or not such a good singer? How is this done? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't do. I mean, at where where we are at the sort of level we're working at, we don't do exams. There is no sort of. Uh, Julia is doing her own exams when she applies for, you know, singing jobs, auditions, mm -hmm. uh, school studying, or so on. That is that is the exam, but um, or meeting, you know, an audience. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, we don't. There, so there is no from from what I'm doing. There is no sort of um, platform that you need to have to be to know that this is neutral. No. Okay. Yeah. Because when I'm thinking about it, but I'm wrong now. I, <laughs> I see. Um, is oh, there are, there might be students that try to sound better, and they are having their own sound studio, and they try to have the best microphones, but that's not really necessary. Aha, uh -huh. no, I don't think so. I mean, that can happen when you have to send in videos to mm -hmm. competitions, you know, or, or to schools now uh, to to apply for places that some people, of course, have brilliant equipment and, and, and brilliant microphones and everything. But, you know, sometimes a brilliant microphone can pick up things that are not so brilliant, much better than <laughs> very, very bad microphones. So I, and you usually, I would say that in, in most cases, if you get a video of somebody singing, the combination of, of seeing them and hearing them mm -hmm. gives you a pretty good idea of what you will get in real life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think so. You so you can see how your student is controlling the body what about yeah. things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and, uh, and of course, it's the most important thing is the, when you get to the stage that you're auditioning for things, it's maybe not so much technique because that you can hopefully learn, but it's the expression and the will to express something, the will to communicate, and, and also, of course, the quality of your voice. But, I mean, you can... When it comes to competitions, of course, it's good that you you have a certain uh, standard, and 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 I think it would be maybe a bit difficult to judge a whole competition just by video. Mm. Uh, yes. But even that is improving. I mean, there is there is um, uh, somebody here in Sweden actually that is uh, trying to get together the possibilities of doing online auditions. Uh, really, you know, for lots of different opera houses in the same time. And that is also, of course, thinking about not only uh, these times that is Corona, but also a more environmentally friendly way of doing it because it means that you don't have to travel and also a, a more economical way because usually if you're a singer and you do an audition in somewhere else, you have to pay to get there, you have to pay to stay there. And it can be thousands of, of no, well, let's say hundreds of euros, you know. To <laughs> do. Yeah. Depends on where, where, where you're staying. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, hundreds of euros, <laughs> maybe, uh, thousands Feels of pounds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, there might be, there might be a possibility to, to develop that. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see where we end up. Because I think that it's important that we just continue to to develop also technically, so that there is actually opportunities for maybe somebody that is in a very uh, remote place to also have their voice heard. For example, when it comes to voices, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. By the way, we had a session on um, online auditioning last week, so if you last check week, yes. our YouTube channel, uh, you will uh, also be able to see this. So oh yeah. Okay. Since so we, this is your teacher, Julia, uh, I will hand over to you because I spoke already too much. So <laughs> no. no, 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 no. <laughs> no. That was very interesting, the interaction, and I think that's that's important to get all the opinions about it. <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, and I'm sure there are other people that have different experiences from from this, but. Uh, this is how how I feel, and I've spoken to some some friends that do a few online teaching, a, a little bit of online teaching, and uh, yeah, it's uh, yes. it's the way forwards, and but it's also the way forwards towards 
the live performance. That's what we're working towards. This is That's just true, yes. the road there, sort of. Mm -hmm. At least it is I, something to yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but I also think there's a relatively high chance for you to uh, at least sing in front of an elder audience because now they um, will be allowed at least to, yeah, they will be vaccinated and then will be allowed to go to concerts maybe. So actually concerts for 70 plus, 60 plus might be possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are hoping that. The, of course, that is the hope, but unfortunately, um, the vaccine as it stands right now, we don't know exactly what that would mean. I mean, we it doesn't mean that you can all of a sudden just go out and, and, and play around as, as before, I think. It will take some time mm -hmm. and we don't know how long it lasts. So, so there's a lot of hope in the vaccine, but I think the most important thing is that we have other ways of doing it, you know, so that we can do it regardless of if we have anything. Because I'm afraid we only waiting for the next pandemic, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean. That can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a very close relation that is that is in, in this business, you know, in the pandemic, uh, <laughs> very close, works very closely with the pandemic. And um, yeah, I would say that we need to find the tools how to handle this, whether we have uh, some kind of, you know, protection or not. And we need to find a way of making music live, even if there is a pandemic mm -hmm. going on, you know. Yeah. So it isn't, yeah. Maybe it could work that you all are, are in sound studios and your audience is having really high quality equipment so they can yeah. hear all the nuances of you singing. Yeah, I mean, yes. yeah. Of course. I mean, we, we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't uh, write off the possibilities of tec technique because, as as you said, even though you seem very young to me, that, <laughs> that the phone has developed even in your lifetime. So, of course, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was born at least before the internet. Three year, three years before the internet. So. Three years before the internet. I don't. Nineteen eighty nine. Oh gosh. Nine yeah. days before the wall fell down. Oh, <laughs> Historic that. times. Yeah, it was because of you. It was your screen. <laughs> of course. Oh. Yeah, that's the secret story of how you <laughs> reunited. Yeah, you sang and you went. <laughs> I caused the, I caused the, the waterfall. You caused the pandemic to end. So we have a story now. <laughs> yeah, this is a hard cross to bear. <laughs> we will do it. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here and give thank us you a for insight. <laughs> yeah, it was thank great. You. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <clears throat> yes. And I think we want to remind all of you out there to go out to our platform from the current music tech. Is it right, Tomek? <laughs> yeah, please go to www.karianmusictech.com and please make sure to subscribe for the conference because. The earlier the better. Who knows? Maybe we will stop yes. <laughs> get, receiving your submissions. So um, yeah, it will be from the 22nd of April, no March, until the 26th. Awesome. So a whole week of current music tech, but not the whole day. So we don't want to overwhelm you. Yeah, it will be what really we did interesting. Today, yes. Yeah, what we did today was a little glimpse into this world. Go on. I'm already so, excited. Three weeks me to go. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So have a great evening great day <laughs> so yes. and greetings from austria and germany we are also remote from each other so to all over the world yes Goodbye. thank you thank you for joining us <laughs> bye bye <laughs> choose <laughs>